this is a unique position for the Warriors. They've never been down 0-2 in a series under their current regime with Steve Kerr at the top and the core players that they have. Of course, they're going to be playing without Draymond Green. Mm -hmm. Huge loss for them, especially on the defensive side of things. But one of the things that I'm most curious to see how things go, the Kings really bad on D at home during the course of the regular season, far better on the road. You look at their defensive rating, 24th out of 30 teams at home. They check in at 8th on the road. But the Warriors, they're fantastic at home, 33-8. and eight. Mm -hmm. Kings have struggled a little bit on the road, or, or rather – that's totally wrong. Kings have been fantastic uh -huh. on the road. They have the best record on the Western Conference on the road. So a bunch of things to consider. It's a, a, a big chess match that's going on. These teams plenty familiar with each other, meeting for the third time already. It's a best of seven series. So there, there's not much you can do that can surprise the other. But the, the, the big question mark is going to be what do the Warriors do without Draymond Green? What do the Kings do to try and take advantage Capitalize of the fact that, that he's right, not yeah. there? I wonder what the atmosphere, I'm really curious to see how the atmosphere is there yeah. in well, how it, Kings it, fans it, travel. It's that game three point, yeah. right? They've won two, two out of four, so they're 50% of the way there. That's the way Kings fans are thinking. Right. And for Warriors fans, it's the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. This is the night for them to turn it around. And it's it, no team in NBA history has ever overcome a 3-0 deficit. So you could say this is a must-win game. Steve Kerr doesn't like to say that unless it's lose or win yeah. or you're eliminated. But the way history is gone, and, and the Warriors are a historic franchise. They can buck any trend possible but in terms of the crowd I I, I, I don't think it's going to be anything like what Compared we've seen at the Golden seen, One. So yeah. like I was saying earlier in the week San Francisco just kind of strikes me as a wine and cheese type crowd <laughs> not not that rowdy get after it crowd that you see and, here. And, and no cowbells allowed right. at exactly. Chase Center. So. And I think that means maybe the Warriors are expecting more Kings fans mm -hmm. to show up than Warriors fans showed up at the Golden One Center. Yeah. It's it, it, It'll be a good atmosphere. It's a playoff atmosphere. But we're going to bring our beer and pretzels, and, we'll, we're, and we're going to be on point. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Beer and pretzels here in Sacramento, yeah. wine and cheese, maybe yeah. it's a little different vibe from, from that kind of crowd. Yeah. All right, so let's check in with Kirsten Keller, who is live at the Chase Center. Pretentious, but. <laughs> <laughs> nose, nose up in the yeah. air a little bit. Walk, right. Walking around eating sushi at a game. Just games, pretzels, beer, and hot dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Nachos. Yep. Dip, dip the hot dog in the nachos. Yep. That's how I roll. <laughs> not many people will argue with any of that. Zach's not having any fun at all. No, he's rough day for him. Rough assignment today. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about it. The, the Chase Center looked relatively empty. We're, we're yeah. 23 minutes, 30 minutes away from tip-off. I mean, compare that to game one right. at the Golden One Center. That place was full with the fans on their feet 20 minutes before tip. But we have to bring in a take from morning meteorologist Adam Epstein, who's hanging out with us tonight. He's off camera, and he said while we were in Zach's story that Warriors fans are kind of used to this, so. Yeah. yeah, and it makes sense. This is old hat for them. Yeah. They, they don't get excited until the conference finals, mm -hmm. probably. I mean, this is the first time the Kings have been in the playoffs in 17 years, so every game is the biggest game anybody's ever experienced in nearly two decades. So it, it's kind of understandable, but I think Kings fans are going to take advantage of that maybe lackluster atmosphere yeah. or, or demand, rather, for tickets in the Bay and, and buy some of them and just show up en masse at the Chase Center. Yeah, and, and in terms of the Bay Area, talking about utility, there's also 7.5 million people on the 101 right now. <laughs> they might be at stuck in traffic. At 638 on a Thursday, <laughs> let's just, you know. <laughs> traffic maybe. Just hop in the park. Yeah. It's right. what the park's for. No traffic there. Right. Just designated, show up. Designated driver for 250 Exactly. Yep. Fantastic <laughs> price. I, I'm also interested to see, because I know we talked about this after the last game, how how up-tempo the Kings played and how the Warriors looked pretty tired. And I'm interested to see how the outcome of this game, if, if, if the atmosphere is something similar like that. That was someone was listening to the pregame press conferences yeah. with Steve Kerr and, and, and Mike Brown was, are the maybe the Warriors, rather, mm -hmm. without Draymond Green and his defensive presence, mm -hmm. maybe they just say, forget it, just pedal to the metal right. and, and just yeah. floor it. Yeah. And let Steph Curry take over have a 40-point game and try and overcome what you're lacking on defense because they're also going to be without Gary Payton II, who's another defensive stalwart mm -hmm. for them. So two of their best defenders not playing tonight.